I'm Barbara Roth, author and illustrator of Anywhere, Anytime, Watercolor, An Artist's Guide to Painting on the Go. And today I'm in the art studio to show you how to make a sketchbook out of an old vintage book. I began um, making these books a couple years ago when I was searching for a portable sketchbook with my favorite kinds of paper. Um, that would stay together while traveling and out and about. And so I tried a few different strategies. Um, and this is what I came up with. These are my books. So here is a vintage book. First, you, you can find them anywhere in the thrift shops, in your library book sale. Um, so this was the first strategy I, ch I tried, the first technique I tried. Um, this was painted in Italy, sitting on a street curb. Here's another one in Italy. So I wanted two sides, and this one I used a ruler. I'll show you how in this video to get this deck ledge. I have a variety of papers. I also have ephemera I collected on the way. Um, this was one of my first books, and if you look at it closely, I used a Coptic stitch, and I was not very good at it when I first started doing it. It was a little difficult for me. And so it's very delicate. And I was searching for a different method of putting the book together. So after I tried the Coptic stitch, I tried folding the pages into signatures. Signatures are four pages each, and they're folded in half. And I tried, this is Pollyanna, I really like this one. Um, I tried just rubber banding them in, like that. And these are the, how you, oops, do the four pages. You just fold, you cut four pages the size of your book and you just fold them in half. But what I found with the rubber band method, and then I put the rubber band over the pages and then over the spine. But I wasn't satisfied with that method. Uh, it put ridges in my, damaged my book, and the rubber bands decomposed after a while. Or they popped, worst of all, while you were out sketching. So I decided to continue searching for a better method. In every um, book, I like to put a pocket. I make a pretend library card pocket. And with that library card pocket, I can stash in all kinds of things, helpful devices to measure. I can stash in business cards, receipts, anything I want, ephemera. So this is what didn't work. Then a friend came by and showed me how to make a book with the pamphlet stitch. And this, this is also a fun, this is the pamphlet stitch where you have three holes and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So what I did with this one was, this was fun because I was going to France and this was a Julia Child cookbook cover. So you can really have fun choosing, choosing your covers and if you want to, you can match them to the country or from whatever you're feeling at the moment. I'll show you a couple more books and talk to you about the covers and then I'll teach you how to do the first step so you can make books like these. So this was a book, and I used, at first I just used simple upholstery thread my mother-in-law had given me. And one time I punched, punched holes with a, hole, with a heavy-duty hole punch and put string, so I could, a ribbon, so I could tie it together. Um, I put a, used duct tape to put a bag in and holding postcards. It's really nice after your trip to have all your ephemera in one place and all the little things you want to remember and postcards and things. So this is from this is, this is from Luca in Italy. Oh, you got to see, this was Tower of Pisa. Couldn't believe it. Got to see. My sketchbooks usually have a combination of arches, watercolor paper, and sometimes mixed media paper. So here was a recipe I put in it. There's another one. You can choose whatever size by what uh, size vintage book you want by um, what size you like to paint. 
and what where you're going and how much room you have in your suitcase or your bag. This is one I took to Spain. This is a Gaudi apartment building. The paper in this was a little smaller than the size of my book, but I liked the title. And uh, it was an old textbook, kind of 40s. If you have a vintage book and you're nervous about cutting into it, and I hear that from a lot of people, um, this is was a Babar book. But when I first found this Babar book, I was reluctant to use it because I just couldn't make myself cut into a Babar book. I knew some librarian would yell at me. So I Xeroxed the front on a color Xerox machine. I Xeroxed the end pages. I Xeroxed the uh, library pocket. And I then covered it with um, clear plastic tape. And I covered a spine with duct tape. Uh, it's not the most um, terrific looking thing, but I loved it, and it was a perfect size for my trip, and it, I, it was Babar, which I loved. This was one that you know, I brought duct tape along on the trip, and even though these, uh, these stitches held, I, just, I had to have reinforce it with duct tape, but it's a pretty sturdy book. I took this all over Scotland, um, made a lot of drawings, and this is, again, this is Arches paper. And I'll show you also how I made a deckled edge. This was a mixed media paper, which was really nice that I had in there. And I, I tried to do a little writing as well as some drawing. This is Quebec. It was cold. Um, so that's that. Here was one that was a fun title. This is called, the, this was The Mad Professor which I thought was funny because a friend of mine calls me the professor. And this is again, combination of papers. And then I stick in ephemera and I glue in things. I like gluing in things because I used to come home with a bag just of odds and ends and never ever put them in. So I bring a glue stick with me. This is my most current book that I'm just about finished with. It's, and what I did was I upgraded. I finally bit the bullet and I bought supplies from a bookmaking store, bookbinding store online. And I, um, that way you can buy wax linen thread and it's sturdier. And what I did was use a, a small book, do the pamphlet stitch and made this book. So now I will show you the first step of how to make a book. Because I'm going to need a new one soon. So this is the book I'm going to use. I just thought this was really an interesting, fun cover. So I wiped it down. Sometimes the vintage books don't get that clean, but that's why they're vintage books. And then you, the first thing you do is you open it and you look at the spine. You look at it. Right here, there's usually some webbing. And usually if it's a very old book, the webbing will just tear apart by itself. And that's what happened with this book. You can see a little bit of the webbing left that hold, held the pages in the book. And I try to, if I can, leave some extra pages from the actual book and the end papers. So, it's really scary, but what you have to do is, you, if your pages don't come out, you have something like this. You open your book, and you take um, an X-Acto knife. And I, sometimes I stand it up, and I just take the blade and just go right down here, trying very carefully. Can you see that? Trying very carefully. I put a slit here. And I try not to cut into the back cover. I have to admit, sometimes I have cut in the back cover, but then you just repair it. And I'll show you that in the next video. I mean, in the next step. And then you, I also cut, you cut back here, and you have your pages, which you can, uh, the old, you have the actual old book. And if you are uh, 
feeling sentimental about the book, you save it and you can use it for something else. You can use it for collage or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so then you have what looks like this. And you lay it flat and you reinforce this spine. And now we're going to assemble the book. So what you want to do first, the first step is you want to reinforce the spine because whoops, generally the spines are really weak in the old books. So you can do it several ways. You may have some tape at home that you can reinforce it with. Um, sometimes I use this, which is a um, tape from Home Depot uh, for fire, to reinforce walls. Um, or I recently upgraded to book binding materials, and this is a book um, cloth that you, I bought from a book binding store online. And I just cut a strip that was bigger than my spine by about maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch. And I used PVA glue, which is a good uh, glue uh, for books, and put it on. And then I carefully um, put the strip over it and uh, put pressure down in the little um, indentations and then let it dry. The next step is to measure your pages. So the best way to do it, the easiest way, is to just measure the existing pages you took out of your uh, book. And you want to make them the same size, but as the pages of your book that were originally in your book. But the trick is you have to make them double. So. Like this is one page size, this is one page size, and you, then you fold them in half to make a signature to fit into your book. So if you want to have a deckled edge, you can use a deckle edge ruler. I have a couple I've bought over the years. And essentially, I use a big sheet of paper, usually 22 by 30, ahead of time, I measure and figure out how many pages I can get out of my 22 by 30 piece of paper. And then you put the, you fold the paper back and forth, and then you line up the ruler with your fold. So if it's not going to rip very easily, then you can wet the fold, and then you just um, make your deckled edge. Or you can just cut it with an X-Acto knife or a scissors or whatever you have on hand. So in order to attach your pages to your book, what you do is you take your pages. I've made four signatures, which is essentially four sheets of paper that I've folded in half. Um, then what I've done is I've put a piece of paper here, the length and the width of just the inner part of the spine. And I know I'm gonna have four pages, so I have four holes. These two holes should be about an inch from the bottom and an inch from the top, and this one should be in the middle. And you should line them up if you can. I have a little space inside about the size of a page. And then I've done the same thing. I lined these up and cut the holes so that I can sew them directly into the holes in the spine. And the holes are on the inside and the outside. I punched them. And the next step will be to use the pamphlet stitch to sew them into the book, literally through the spine. You can find lots of tutorials on the internet on how to use the pamphlet stitch for book binding. So I'm just going to show you a few details about it. So I finished sewing the pages in my book. I use the pamphlet stitch. This is how the spine looks with all the pages in the four signatures. This is how it looks inside. I have used, for thread, I have used wax linen thread. You get it from a book binding site, website or store. And I used a, large, a needle with a large eye. 
and that holds the pages in securely. Um, when I'm now that I'm finished with the book, and I, I may later put um, put a closure on it if I decide it needs it to keep everything secure. And one of my favorite things to do is make a old library card, vintage library card pocket, and sew that in. And then I always also like to, comes in handy when you're anywhere traveling, um, I always like to put in envelopes. You can also put in a ribbon to mark your pages. And then you have the perfect sketchbook made out of a vintage book. I hope you make a book. And if you do, tag me at Anywhere Art For You and Walter Foster on social media. And if you want to, you can visit my website at barbaroth anywhereart.com. Thanks for watching.